Hi guys, welcome to another Divi theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and WebDesignandTechTips.com. This is another in our series of Divi for Beginners videos and you can find the playlist for that down below this video here. Today we're going to look at Divi Transform. Now each module, row and section has a little tab in it called Transform and you can do some amazing things in it without coding. For instance, I've got a little jump here. I've created hover effects just to make it easy to see what's going on. I've got a grow here, it's just growing. Over here you can spin it around. Now of course, hover effects work best on desktops and they're great for getting people's eyeballs on things. If something like that happens when they put their mouse over it, it's going to get their attention pretty quickly. They will work on tablet and mobile, but of course people will have to tap. I've got some images here if we hover over this first one. It's going to zoom in on the fella's face there. And we're not just zooming in on the center of the image. I'm actually targeting his face there so it's central. Second one over there, if I hover over it, it's going to flip round. And the third one, we're zoomed in on this chap's face. If I hover on it, it's going to zoom back out for the main picture there. And of course, any of these can be used as a light box also. You just click on it, it'll pop out. Or you can link it to any way you want. Down below, I've just skewed some pictures and just sort of flipped them around with the transforms in a random sort of order. But if I actually hover over one, it's going to go back to the correct position. And again, you can click on it. Have your light box if you want to. And like I mentioned earlier, no coding whatsoever involved in this. It's all just using the inbuilt features of Divi. So let's get started. I'm going to enable the Visual Builder. Once enabled, let's go down to where we want to work. I'm going to add a new row just under where my images are here. I'm going to click. I'm going to hit the little green button for a new row. I'm just going to put two columns in this particular row. And let's perhaps start off with an image. You can use any module you want. And don't forget the rows and sections also have these settings. So I'm going to pop a little image in here. There we go. Let's choose an image. Let's just pop that one in. Fun. Okay, well, I've got an image here. With images, if I hover over this, you'll see a crazy little number alphanumeric thing there. That's actually the name of this image. If you don't want to see that or you want to change it to something that's more pertinent, head over to your advanced under attributes. There's the image title right there. You can change it to something like world or whatever you want there or just delete it. And when you hover over, it's not going to do it. Okay, now we're in here. Every module has these same tabs here. And under each tab, you'll have similar lists. So let's go over to design right at the bottom. We'll find transform. And we've got five little tabs here. First one's transform scale, which means make bigger or smaller. Second one's transform translate. And I'll go through all these and show you. This is actually moving it basically. Rotate, self-explanatory. Skew. Again, self-explanatory, it'll skew it. And transform origin is you can transform the point at which this rotates. At the minute, it's going to rotate from the central point. If you want it to rotate from one corner, you can put it down there. Okay, well, let's make some examples. For those little images above, all I did was use a little skew or transform. So let's just go through some of these so you can see what's going on. Obviously, scale is going to make it bigger or smaller. Anytime you do something with Divi, if you don't like it, select it and delete it. There's a little chain here. If that's highlighted in blue as it is at the moment, it'll do both sides at once. You can uncheck it and fine tune however you wish. Transform translate. That's move basically. With rotate, you've got three axes to go around. And you can mix and match however you wish and get some crazy effects, kind of like I did up here. And again, if you don't like what you've done, simply delete it. Next is skew. And again, let's uncheck this this time and we'll slide one slider. Obviously, it skews it however you wish. 
And here's the transform translate. If I move this, well, actually, let's do a rotate first. If I now rotate this that way, it's rotating from the center. I move that. And now do a rotate. It's going to rotate from this part right here. As you can see, much wider arc. Great, well, let's actually do something practical with this. So these ones above, basically what I did, I started it out a little bit rotated and a little bit skewed. So I'm just throwing a few of these axes in here. And I'll use a bit of skew as well. So that's what they're going to see when they initially load the page, like these crazy ones up the top here. If we hover over the dark writing, this is common to all modules, you can create a hover effect. Hover over the dark writing, whatever it is you want to affect. If there's an arrow there, we can have completely different values from when the mouse is not on it, desktop. And when the mouse is on it, hover. So I'm now going to click on the hover. And I'm going to bring it back to normal size and skew. And you know how I'm going to do that. I'm just going to go in here, put a zero. And we'll go back, rotate. I'm just popping a zero in each of those. And we want that back where it was. Uncheck the chain and put a zero. The original starting position there. I think we were good to go with this one. We didn't actually use scale, which makes it bigger and smaller. Great. So when they're not got their mouse on it, it's going to be crazy looking like that. When they put their mouse over it, there it is. I'm actually going to go in there. I'm going to take the transform origin off of that. So this one, I'm just going to click right on the middle there. And it should pop it back in the middle and say center, center. Fantastic. So we've got this when their mouse is not on it. And this when their mouse is on it. Time it takes to get from one to the other is in advanced. You always find this in advanced. There it is, transition. There's the duration, default 300 mils, which is just under a third of a second. I'm going to slow mine down just for a little bit of drama. And the transition speed curve I like to use for my hover effects is easy. In Great. Let's take a look at what we've got here. Save those changes. I'm going to quickly save the page changes. Let's exit the visual builder. We will roll on down. There's our image. When I hover over it, it's going to flip back to normal size. And if you've enabled lightbox and things, it'll pop out into a lightbox. When you take the mouse off, as you just saw, it's going to flip back to how it was. So play with those. You can get some wonderful, wonderful things going. So let's do another one and we'll target a specific position. I'm sure some of you have already figured out how you do this. Let's do that. And then we'll do a simple text animation so let's get rid of this particular one let's enable the visual builder and we'll go down let's delete that image and we'll start from scratch let's add a new image this time now yeah, let's grab something with something we can zoom on like somebody's face ah this will do we'll pop that one in Great. So I'm going to take that crazy number away. Attributes. I'm going to go back to my content tab. And I'm going to have this pop out into a light box. That's always under link. Great. Now we know where transitions are. Under the design tab. Roll down. There we are. Transform. Now, you can either have this zoomed in, or you can start it zoomed out, and we'll zoom in. Let's start that today. So what I want to do, we'll start this image just like this, but when they hover over it, I want it to zoom in on this fella's face, perhaps. So again, let's roll over the dark writing. If there's an arrow there, there is. We can get that done. So the first one is scale. So when they hover over it, I want it to get a lot bigger. So I'm going to pull this up. I've got the chain check so it's going to do both at once that's fine but I want his face to be in the middle 
So if we go next door to transform translate, we can move this until this face is in the middle. Now I'll show you a little trick in a minute. Of course, this image is now huge and we don't want it spilling out of the row that it's in. We just want it to be zoomed in same size as the original image. So let's put this back to normal. We'll readjust this in a moment. To stop that image getting any bigger than it is at the moment, so we can actually zoom in on it, let's see what we've got going on here. And this is a really useful thing to know. It's slightly more than beginners, but it's a really great thing to know. If we go into the row, go into the column, go over to the advanced tab, we're going to hide any overflow. So anything that spills out of the original size of the column will not be shown. If we go down, Visibility. Here we'll find horizontal and vertical overflow. If we change both of these from default to hidden. Now, if I make that a lot bigger, you'll see that it does not get any larger than that column. Let's save those changes. While we're in here, I'm going to do the same for the next one in case we want to do something similar with a blurb module, which I'll do in a moment. And we'll save those changes, save the main row changes. Go back into our little module here. Now, if I go down, design, transform, hit the hover button. You'll see it's growing, but it's not spilling out of our column. And I've obviously not made it big enough because we've got a bit of a gap here. So with the transform scale, I'm going to make that a little bit bigger. Remember, I'm on the hover state at the moment. So it's filling it right out. And I can go next door, translate, and just fine tune, move him wherever you want him. So when they're not hovering, they got the regular picture. When they hover, it's going to be zoomed in on its face. And again, we've got a transition timing over in advanced, transitions, Default 300. I'm going to slow mine down to maybe twice that. 600 milliseconds, perhaps. Obviously, make yours how you wish. And my speed curve I like to use for horror effects is ease in, ease out. Great. Well, I'm going to leave that just like that. We can do the same thing with text modules and things like that. Let's just pop, pop a call to action in there. To add a button, just go down to the link. Put any link in where it says button link there. Once you put a link in there, the button will show up for you. And again, on any module, you can do all kind of effect by going down design tab, transform. And perhaps we want this to flip round when they hover over it. Really easy to do. I'm going to use a transform rotate for that. But I only want it to happen on hover again. So in transform, I'm going to hit the little arrow. I'm going to flip it to hover. When they put their mouse on it, I'm going to go over to my rotates. I'm just going to use this one. I'm going to drag it all the way back around to 359. It won't work if you do zero because it won't move at all. So when they hover over, it's going to do that. When they take their mouse off, it's going to flip back around like that. And because we hidden that overflow, the corners aren't spilling out there. And again, timing wise, I'm going to slow that down slightly over in advanced transitions. Say maybe 500. Obviously, do what works for you. Ease in, ease out. Great. Well, let's save our changes and take a look at what we've got here. We'll roll on down. And there's our first image. When I zoom over it, it should zoom in onto his face. Fantastic. When I let go, it'll ease back to the regular picture. Now we've got a little call to action module over here. And as you can see, it's spinning around when I hover over it. That's great. And you can combine these with filters and things like that to get some great image to text hover effect things. I'll do one of those quickly. It's a little beyond the scope of this video. But again, it's a wonderful thing to know and it's really easy. So let's just re-enable this visual builder once. And we'll roll down. 
Let's go into this little row and we'll combine this with a couple of filters to do an image to text effect. Going to go into the row, the green tab. We're working on the second column here. Here it is right here. And the content is always where you'll find background. Let's just pop an image into the background there. Throw in any image you want. And of course you can't see it bit because it's behind that module. I've got mine set to cover, so it'll always cover whatever area there is there. You can change the act image position if you want to here. Okay, well, I'm happy with that. Remember, we've got our overflow hidden. I'm going to say the main row settings. Now let's go in here. Now, depending on which way round you want to see this, do you want to see the text first or the image first? Let's go over to our design. This time, I'm going to go down to filters. And we've got a video on filters down below. You can do some wonderful things with them. Take a look at that if you want to learn more. I'm going to go straight down to opacity. Now, our opacity is going to make this module disappear into the background or not. For instance, if I take this all the way down, you're just going to see that image. So we can create a great hover effect doing this. Now, decide whether you want the image first or the text first. Let's go for the image first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hover up over the dark writing on opacity again, get the little arrow up. If I want to see the image first, that's when the mouse is not on it, desktop, I take that opacity all the way down. That's what they're going to see when they visit the page. Then when they hover over it, I want our little text call to action to fade in. Now I'm actually going to flip around what I've got done here. I don't know if you notice, I did 359 degrees, which is okay when there's no reference point, <laughs> but you can see that skewed. So we'll go back into the module, transform settings, and just flip that around the other way. If you don't understand what I'm saying, design tab, transform. We use the transform rotate on desktop. I had it set to zero. I'm going to set that to 359. Get it close, increment up with the little arrows. And when they hover over it, I'm going to make it zero. That way, it's perfectly straight in there. And we've already set our transition timing over here in transitions. This should all work for us now. I know this is just a little bit beyond the scope of regular transitions, but that's a really simple hover effect with no coding. One that I use quite often. So let's save our changes. And exit the visual builder. Let's roll on down where we were working. There's that little image. It's just an image when we hover over it. We've got that little module spinning in. Of course, they can hit the button, read the text, take their mouse off. It's going to spin back out. So there you go, guys. That's a brief overview of the transform. And like I say, you can do some wonderful and amazing things with it if you take a little bit of time. No coding whatsoever. So I hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful. Don't forget, if you have any questions, pop them below the video. I'll do my best to answer them for you. Or make a little demo video just like this one. Once again, this has been Jamie with System22 and WebDesignerTechTips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.